Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be doing my presentation on Umberto Eco's The Name of the Rose. This was an international bestseller. Um, you might have heard of it either because of the book or because there was a movie made uh, about it with Sean Connery playing the main character William de Baskerville. Um, of course, I'm going to suggest reading the book, not watching the movie. Even if the movie's really good, I will give them credit. Uh, we know the power of words in literature, or else we wouldn't be taking a literature class in the middle of summer. Uh, so I'm going to truly suggest reading the book. It is a masterpiece. It is, for me, Umberto Eco's greatest work. And I have never read anything like it before or after. And the first time I read this was three years ago, and nothing has ever come close since. So. Just to start this uh, whole idea, um, before delving into the book, there is a frame that is built. So we've talked about frames in class. Um, Umberto Eco does this in a very interesting way. He kind of forces the reader to read his frame because he made such a large introduction. It's like 20 pages. At first, you might be skipping through like most people do when it comes to an introduction, especially an introduction by the author. But when you keep skipping through all of these pages and the introduction is not done, kind of forces you to go back and be like, hmm, there might be something important in here. He says in this introduction that he collected pieces of manuscripts a long time uh, that were in different translations, in Latin, in Arabic, in French, and he just tried to compile the entire thing together. Uh, and so asks us from the very beginning to forgive him if there are any narrative inconsistencies. He's not writing the book. All he's doing is combining these manuscripts because he believes the story deserves to be told. Now this is very intelligent because when in the book you enter these like very atmospheric, obscure, almost paranormal activities in the library, etc., you forgive him. You forgive him and you kind of doubt because you're like, is this real? Because at the beginning he tells you this is a true story. It's not. And that, it's brilliant because you have to doubt the entire way through. It's a very intelligent book. Um, if you see interviews later on with him, uh, he says it's not true. So if anybody has any doubts, it's confirmed. It's not a true story. It's not actually a manuscript. This is a piece of fiction pulled from this brilliant mind's head. So about the story itself a little bit. Um, this is set in the 13th century. It is during the Inquisition. Uh, it is in a monastery. You have the main character, William de Baskerville, as I had mentioned, and yes, this is a reference to uh, Sherlock Holmes. Um, even his sidekick is called Atso, which is kind of a play on Watson, um, phonetically. So that just starts on the theme of interrelatedness that I'm going to get to later. Um, so uh, William de Baskerville is a monk, and him and Atso, the, the milk, are going to this kind of like monk conference, I suppose would be the term, and see that um, a monk committed suicide and monks keep dying around this monastery. So at first you believe this is going to be a murder mystery. And I mean, technically it is, technically it is. You have a murder, you have a mystery, it gets solved. But what makes this so different from other books is that it's not about the murder mystery. The murder mystery is only a supporting plate for everything else that's put upon it. It is about truly the interrelatedness of everything in the world, not just humans, not just books, everything. It's, no, as I said, for me, it's truly excellent. Um, what can I do to explain the interrelatedness? Um, well, as I had said, William de Baskerville, which is a reference to Sherlock Holmes, um, he also names the scribe, the blind scribe monk who takes care of this library, Jorge de Burgos, I think. I might be pronouncing this wrong. But this is very close to a name of one of Umberto Eco's favorite authors, Jorge Luis Borges. So you see that he's trying to play and he's using the symbolism and all these different words to, to combine and to make people think of other things that are not just his book. He's making us think outside of his book. For me, The Name of the Rose is a book about books about books. And there is a quote which directly relates to this. So I apologize, I'm going to be looking at my screen, but I'm just going to read this to you because I think it really portrays what I'm trying to say here. And forgive me, I'm hitting my five minute mark, but I just think this is very important, especially for the theme that I'm trying to talk about, especially of interrelatedness. So here we go. 
Until then, I had thought each book spoke of things, human or divine, that lie outside of books. Now I realize that, in, not infrequently, books speak of books. It is as if they spoke among themselves. In the light of this reflection, the library seemed all the more disturbing to me. It was then the place of long, centuries-old murmuring, an imperceptible dialogue between one parchment and another, a living thing, a receptacle of powers not to be ruled by a human mind, a treasure of secrets emanated by many minds, surviving the death of those who had produced them or had been their conveyors. So even himself in his story is talking about books relating to other books and all of these interrelated stories and just what happens with humans and oh, it's, it's really well done. And he uses this type of trope in other of his stories if you read them later on. I'm not going to get into too much detail about the book because I truly believe everyone should read this. For me, this is, you know, a, a list of like the top 100 books every human should read in their life. For me, this is, this is really up there. This is top 10. So I'm not going to talk about the end. I'm not going to give the, the spoiler to the murder mystery. But uh, I hope I made you a little more interested in this book. I hope I uh, convinced you to read a large book, even though the beginning's a little harsh. Uh, it's a little rough to get into but after that it it pays off so hopefully you guys enjoyed this i want to thank again the professoressa for this class thank you for this summer it was fantastic and hope you guys have a great rest of the year thank you very much